Hey everybody, today I am here to talk to you about finding peace in painting, painting for therapy. So uh, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to paint this scene today. All right, we'll see you on the other side. Hey everybody, Jessica Henry Gray here. I'm happy to be back here today with you guys. Um, it's been kind of a rough summer. I know I haven't been on YouTube here for a few months and um, I've missed everybody, but um, it's just been tough. And I know it's been tough for a lot of people. Uh, so today's video is about dealing with hard times. And I wanna to talk to you about that and how to use hard times to your advantage, to your benefit when you're out there working and you need to just get out and breathe some fresh air, turn off the news, put your phones down and just take some time. Um, I know what it's like. I've been through a lot this summer as have you all too, I know. Um, so today let's just do a little bit of fun plein air painting. I'm deep in the woods here. I'm gonna just kind of circle. I thought that this was just such a neat place to be. Um, you can see all around me, these beautiful trees and um, covered in bug spray, <laughs> like I got it all over. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just lovely and peaceful. And that's part of the, the main thing that you have to look for when you are out just trying to get some peace of mind and clarity of thought. Find somewhere that is peaceful. We spent an hour and a half today looking for somewhere to paint because my original place, it was right next to the airport and the planes and then the traffic, and but it was woods, uh, but it just was too loud. So I found this other forest and I really like how quiet it is. I've got my stuff down here and I'm gonna get set up and then I'll come back to you in just a minute. I'm gonna sit today because I'm just, I'm, I'm not feeling great. So I'm gonna just kind of sit and relax and paint and um, that's okay too. Typically I don't because I like to walk back and forth in front of the easel, um, but today I'm sitting. Okay, so the first thing you want to do in establishing a thumbnail sketch is to determine the overall layout of the objects in your scene into a composition. So when you're out in nature and you're overwhelmed with all the choices that are before you, you have to just isolate something that you really like and what, what is it that you really respond to. In this forest here where I am, most of the colors are monotone and monochromatic and so I'm looking for contrast just to make an interesting scene. 
So I noticed that in the water down here, there was some nice sky reflected into it. So those became my lightest um, passages in here. And then I have this nice tree that forms an interesting angle and darker silhouette. So I'm using that with the contrast of this sky in here to be a nice focal area. And then it'll gently lead the viewer back into the painting. So I'm thinking about that arrangement of inviting them in this way and then come back in through here and then come around. So the angle of these trees help to keep that visual inside the canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this and I've established my darkest areas, my lightest areas, and then just a, the way that these value patterns and masses sort of play with each other. There's a lighter mass of the spring green, a chalkier blue-gray green ma uh, mass back here, and then reflected into the water, it's always a little bit darker in the reflection. So it's just a little more there and I'll get to that on the canvas. All right, so I'm gonna leave this handy where I can see it and I will jump in. Now, on the way here, my odorless mineral spirits spilled all over the inside of my bag. So I'm just going with a little bit of linseed oil and I'm just going to draw on my um, canvas here, uh, my thumbnail sketch. So this is a nine by 12 panel and just taking a little bit of sienna and blue. Just going to sketch in place what I had planned for my thumbnail sketch. And this is nice too, because all of my thinking is already done with the, the planning of where I'm gonna go with the objects on here. So I'm not overwhelmed looking at all of that right away. So just going by my plan, it's sort of like you wouldn't start building a house without a blueprint. That's what this thumbnail sketch is for you as you begin this process. I just can't underscore the importance of that enough when you begin your journey into plein air painting is to start with a plan. Start with your blueprint, um, your thumbnail sketch. So often when I'm teaching workshops, I come over and I say to the student, where's your, where's your thumbnail sketch? And, oh, I didn't do one. <laughs> you need to have it. You need to have your thumbnail sketch. So get that done and then you don't have to stress so much about where you're going to go with what you're going to do. So it's like life. And that's one of the ways um, that I, I prefer to deal with uh, stress and tension too. And this whole video is gonna be a little bit about dealing with um, stress and challenges in life. And so even as we jump into this and we go forth in this painting, having those plans is gonna eliminate a lot of that stress. So just like in life, and I have, have an idea of knowing where you're gonna go um, with your plan. So I like where this, I like how this tree is. And this one back here, I don't wanna completely copy the angle of this, which would be very easy to do. This one is a little bit more vertical. This one kind of leans even a little bit more so like that. So we'll have that nice play back and forth. And this one's just a little bit lighter. And we'll let that kind of get lost in the at the base there. I might as well paint this as dark as I see it right now. And I'm just using a little bit of linseed oil to thin this out and sort of draw it in place. And the whole purpose today um, in plein air painting that I really want to stress is um, finding some peace and relaxation in plein air. And um, I just, I, I think most people out there in the world today are watching events and things that are happening. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm finding that I just need to get away from the news. I need to turn off the phone and not think about anything. Um, my prayers are, are constantly going out for people that are hurting and struggling in the world, um, yeah, especially Afghanistan and all of that situation, um, the families of the military 
And I'm just, you're on my heart and mind. I've got a couple of kids myself in the military. And so I, I, I feel that um, very deeply. It's very scary. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, I'm, so I'm going along here. I'm just kind of blocking in again where I had placed these masses, the rock down here that's covered in moss. Um, maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger if it comes around. Okay, and then in here, I have the reflections of things going down this way. And then off to this side, I really like this tree. Kind of comes up this way, and then it angles out this way into the water. And I think that's important. I'm just going to take a little bit of the cadmium yellow and some blue, just while I do a thin, thin layer of this um, green, just scrubbed in place. Even, it's sort of like toning the canvas this color. Uh, because I lost my gamsol on the way here, I didn't really get to tone the canvas. So I'm just sort of rubbing it in like this and then I'll rub some of it off. And you'll see, that, that sort of works to tone the canvas. I know a lot of people don't paint with odorless mineral spirits and this is one way that you could um, prepare your canvas as you're working on it without the odorless mineral spirits. So you just put it on and rub it off. I try not to use the odorless mineral spirits very much indoors because um, without proper ventilation, you can. Um, you just need to have a good system to get it out because in time, it will start to bother you. There, but Even though it says odorless, it's not. <laughs> you, it, there's still a, a smell. Even if your brain is picking it up, it's there. Um, but outdoors, I, I don't smell it. I don't have a, an issue with that. Um, just to put a little bit of white in that, just to cool that down a little. And that's fine for the initial toning of that. I may as well get the background and kind of rub in some of that too. Just sort of gives me a, a sense of where I'm gonna go with my colors and values. Blues and whites. Let me just rub that on. And this whole background passage of trees is a lot bluer than this spring green passage of trees. Um, so I'm gonna make sure to paint that with that really nice contrast. I could put some sky holes back in there as I need to. Okay, so now I'll get that, this sort of bright spring green. The sun's kind of coming out again. Maybe a little bit. I, oh, today on my palette, I have um, titanium white. This is cad yellow medium, and this is cadmium yellow lemon. So I'm using that today. That's a newer one that is not normally on my palette. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, evolution permanent, phthalo green, and I also have radiant turquoise. Um, that's just a new color I've been playing with lately. I don't know that I'm gonna use that much today either, but it's there in case I want to. bit of the darker back in this way because it kind of tones down back there. Normally I do a voiceover on these videos but I decided that since it was so peaceful here today that this might be a, a nicer opportunity just to talk while I am um, working. I do enjoy there's a sense of immediacy with the instruction when I'm actually doing it at the moment and um, so I do enjoy that once in a while. Uh, I have been very busy this summer too, not just um, with the trials and 
situations and issues with my own family, but also um, we've been working on a children's book, which has been a nice uh, mental break. That something that I've always wanted to do, and um, it's it's an educational art educational book about a little girl and her horse. They find a magic palette and it takes them back through time to uh, help the girl with her art problems. So she gets to meet with Monet in the first book. She's meeting with Monet uh, to help her with color and light. And uh, while they are back in history, because the magic itself is, um, the palette itself is magic that they travel on, um, the horse is able to speak. And he was actually my horse when I was younger. So I took from that inspiration from my childhood. And, uh, anyway, so it's just really excited. It's been a, a really a wonderful joy to work on. And uh, we're at the stage in the journey now where we're looking for agents. So any of you know any agents, let me know <laughs> of children's books. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, no, so we're just uh, having a lot of fun. Um, and it's, it's a young reader's chapter book. So it's, um, we, we started out making it a children's picture book, but realized that there's just too much to say and it, it didn't really lend itself quite appropriately for a picture book. So it makes more sense as a young reader chapter book. A lot of fun, good adventures. Okay, so in the meantime here, I've just been filling in some of these um, values and colors that I'm seeing going on back here. And this is sort of a chalky uh, uh, taupe that I see back in the water. And I'll show you a picture of it here. A um, little bit of yellow ochre into the blue and white mixture. And just paint those colors together. I don't use a palette knife to mix my colors because I like to feel what I'm actually doing with the brush and the Kind of gauge a little bit more here and there. I find that if, if it's mixed up with a palette knife, you're pretty much committed to that that pile, and um, it's harder to break away from the subtle nuances if you need to because you've got this pile you're committed to. <laughs> so um, I use my brush, perfectly fine to use your brush for that. They're made for that. Just a nice blue gray. A little bit of green. That yellow ochre is nice for that background green, blue gray green back there. Okay, I like where that's going. You want to enjoy your, your journey here every step of the way. Um, it doesn't mean that your painting has to turn out and be perfect um, by no stretch of the imagination. Today, especially this this journey is not about creating a perfect painting it's about um just enjoying every step and if you don't like something that you just did it's super easy to wipe off and just start again um, life is full of opportunities like that just wipe it off and start over and like i always say they make more canvases you don't have to worry about it don't get stressed but enjoy it that's what you're here for I find um, for me personally when I get out and paint or even in the studio my mind starts to wander and, and I start thinking about those things that were stressing me out and um, you just you really have to learn how to compartmentalize and to put things in a box. And uh, otherwise you, you're just gonna start your brain spinning and that's not good either. Um, so compartmentalizing, put those things in a box and say, when I get back home, I'll deal with it all then. But for now, this is my time. I don't have to worry about those things. I don't have to stress. Sometimes I use this time alone in the woods to just Either pray or or not think at all. <laughs> um, but it is 
it is that sense of peace that I think that we all look for somewhere. And um, for me, I find it when I can think about other people and, and pray for them and um, it really helps put, put things in focus and perspective. I'm just taking now and building up some of these patterns that I see, hitting these darks, nice and dark where I see them back there. But they are dark, I want them darker than this because, or not, not as dark as this is going to be because if they are darker than this, they'll come forward in front of this and I, that, I don't want that to happen. It wouldn't really make sense. In order to create the feeling of atmosphere, the values have to go back. Um, and recede as they go away. Okay, so that's all right. I'm gonna continue blocking in the rest of the values before I tighten that up anymore. So this I had already established as my darkest value up front here. But again, I mean, it's not perfectly black. So I have to figure out exactly the degree to which that is the darkest value. a little bit of yellow ochre in that gray down here where the, the ambient light from this whole forest is kind of bouncing into the bark of this tree and so just suggest some of that down there. We got this tree back here and this tree is going to be just a little lighter than the one in front. Alright, now we've got sort of just this gray mixture for the mud area down here. I'm using this the burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. It, it's usually lighter than you think because the sky is hitting the wetness of the mud. And I'm just using the smallest amount of linseed oil when I dip my brush in there. Um, so just a little tiny corner. And I'm just using it to sort of loosen up the paint a little bit, make it smoother and glide off my brush with greater ease. And this brush I'm using today is a size four rosemary, um, just a classic long flat. And that's pretty much all I've been using so far in this whole painting. I'm 
I'll just scumble that in there as a base and I'll paint the bright greens on top of it. green on the rock over here. It's moss. It's one of these darker tones underneath it too. I'll turn my blue burnt sienna. Bring that over here too. Alright. And then this rock over here is Kind of light, a little ochre, some white. Let's tone it down with a little gray. Where are we at? Do I have any more rocks that look kind of neat? No, but that tree trunk root is a little bit lighter. Let's give it some form that way. In fact, I have the sun sort of peeking through, dappling the roots of the trunk right here. So let's put some sunlight on there. Just a little. And this one too. All right. make this nice and dark at the base of this rock where the mud has gotten it wet and murky. Now I'm going to come back through and sort of tighten everything up. And once you get everything blocked in, it's a lot easier at this point now to go, we'll just work from the background and work our way forward and pull in those lighter, um, or just tighten everything up. What I want to do at this moment though, is just put in these passages where I have the lightest light on here, because I don't have that value extreme yet on my canvas. So let's get these in place and we'll really see it start to pop at this point. And take a little bit of that radiant turquoise and some white. I'm just using the corner of my brush to figure out where these are. put some of these just up here just to suggest some of the sky is it barely peeks through
Let me take some ultramarine blue. Remember, everything in the water is going to be a little bit darker than what's being reflected above it. So I still want the sky to be bright, but it does. I'm seeing more of that ultramarine blue, especially as we're over here. Now, now it starts to really take shape where you can see the color and the, the design of the whole painting. Okay, that was what I needed to do before going back now and just tightening everything up. So my solid structure forms, I'll start with that tree trunk back there. And it's a little bit darker than the one in front. So, or down in the water here, it's just, I'm seeing it more. I'll just give that a little bit more information and form. And then some other passages back in here. We'll just drop those in. Little areas. And if you notice, I am not over concentrating on any of the detail. I'm not getting a tiny brush out to um, put in the little tiny things that I see over there because that passage back there, however interesting it is, is not what the painting is about. So I don't want to start on detail that isn't going to help push forward my the narrative of the painting, which this is the focal area. So if I put all this detail and information back here, then that becomes a focal area, or it competes with the um, areas in front, and I don't want it to do that either. So. It's keeping all of that in perspective as you're working to let what's back there stay back there and not pull it forward. This is ultramarine blue, a little bit of that yellow that was underneath it and some white. And I'm looking at these leaves as they're coming down into the water back there. Just gonna, if I squint my eyes at it, you can see how they sort of cascade down above the surface. A bit of phthalo green and cad yellow will give you a nice bright green if you need that in places. But don't put too much of it back there. Let that stay in the background. Okay, cleaning my brush up as well as I can. I'm gonna take some of the cad yellow lemon and a tiny bit of phthalo green. And this will just really look like a sun, sunlight green color. That'll pop in a few places back there. Oop, that's too much. A bit of white into that is pretty too. So now, sometimes the light goes away, a cloud covers the sun or whatever, 
But when it comes back, you can come back to where you were going with some of these features and get those back in. I'll put those down in the water too while I have them. And they're a little bit darker in the water. I'm just using some smaller brush strokes, little dabs like this, allowing some of the underpainting to show through and um, just letting those small pieces of color sort of just dance and play, kind of like an impressionist painting and, and little bits like that. And I'll come back through with more sky holes. But remember, a plein air painting is not about how perfect you can make it just like the scene. It's about uh, capturing a moment in the light and um, creating a feeling that you saw in the area in that scene. And how do you do that? So it's just a study. And you can always um, go back to the studio and make it bigger or keep coming back to the same place every day for a while and working on it. Um, that's all possibilities of things you can do with plein airs, plein air studies and paintings. But don't be too hard on yourself. Um, a lot of people uh, find that they might start or they're afraid to start. <laughs> they get going and it's just, it, they realize it's a lot harder than it seems. Um, but if you just, a couple of, couple of tricks that I've always tried to tell people is tricks. They're not tricks, but they're, they're strategies to an approach that will help you. Um, we often, I think it's in our nature just to pack along everything we think we might need. Well, trust me, you don't need everything. <laughs> just bring along the essentials. That'll make your outing a lot more enjoyable if it's not overloaded and cumbersome with equipment. So just take the bare essentials. Most of my stuff just fits in a backpack. Um, and then um, give yourself, say, I only have an hour to do this. I only have, you know, two hours or whatever. And, and then only do that. That way, whatever you get done, you get done. If you don't, then you're forcing yourself to just paint the essentials. Just try to catch the most important things. But giving yourself a time frame is kind of nice for that. And then another thing, Keep your canvas small. There's no reason to bring your 16 by 20 or 18 by 24 out to plein air paint. You're out there to capture color notes in a study. I mean, unless it's an actual project and you want to paint a scene and uh, you want to do it all from nature, then you're willing to come back day after day after day to tackle that. That's, that's one thing, but uh, most people, I think, just have a hard time carving out a few hours here and there, so. Just give yourself that room to grow and it'll be okay. These leaves kind of coming down to the water back there. I think they look so pretty. And then they're reflected into the pond. The water's so still. When is Naomi done? Did she say? What is that? 
Is that a, a, a bug or a frog? Or? And now, even though I have some of these sky holes down here, I'm still going to paint around them and uh, work the colors. And I can paint over them and smudgy them a little bit here and there. It's all right to soften those edges and kind of break up that passage. And I did bring a teeny little brush that I can put in some smaller sky holes, which will be, look really interesting as I. Um, as I need them, but trying out that bug spray today, and I, I gotta say, it seems to be working. I ordered a bug spray, or I got a bug spray from a lady at a farmer's market here, and I, I bought it from her for the specific purpose of planner painting because it's all organic and like you could probably eat the stuff, though I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but I wanted it for traveling because it, air travel, you know, you can't bring bug spray, aerosol bug spray on a plane. So I got the stuff and I'm using it today and I'm finding it working. Are you finding it works, honey? It does work. I, you know what? I'll put the link down below here if you'd like to get um, some bug spray from her. It's just amazing. So now this is my focal area. So I want this to be nice and crisp in here. So I'm gonna do a sharper edge right in here. And I'll clean up that line a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of drag my brush down just a little to give the illusion of it being water. Soften those. Down here in the water, I want all of this brushwork to be a little bit more muted, a little bit um, softer and understated, just so it's not um, jumping out, looking brushworky. I don't mind that this up here does, um, but it's important that down below it has the illusion of water. So I can go softer strokes going vertically and softer strokes going horizontally. And this is just how I do it. This is this is just my the way I speak <laughs> with brush. Um, everybody finds their own uh, language after a while. Every the way you hold the brush, the way you handle the paint and scoop it up, the choices you make in mixing colors, it all becomes a part of your visual language. It's it's like learning to speak a, a poetry that really only you understand, and it's. Um, it's special and unique and it makes your paintings truly different than anyone else. So I always think it's a little bit of a shame when I see people um, working too hard to copy other people. It's That's sad because you're denying your own uh, uniqueness. So find what works for you. Take bits and pieces from everyone you meet and every video you watch. Sometimes you'll find things that work for you and things that don't work for you and you just have to sift through and um, 
you know, it's kind of like what what works and then it becomes a part of your own language and your own uh, thought processes as you're painting. And that's so cool, that's unique. Okay, so I kind of like the illusion of how that water is looking like water. I'm gonna go back now in the background and just take some of this white into this um, sort of taupe mixture. And I'm gonna make it look a little bit more like there's mist or something rising up in here. Or that haze on the surface back here, really soft. And that was one of the things that I, I responded to about this scene is how that just, it looks so neat back there. It's that glassy smoothness. those sky pieces back in. And I might take the opportunity to, oh, here's this one that's kind of small. I got some linseed oil in there. And I put a little bit of extra linseed oil than I normally use so I can get it a little bit more liquid. It's important that I get these done before I start painting um, the branches from this tree going down or any of the other detailed information. So. Well, I've got this smaller brush. I think I'll come through and just sort of suggest some of these leaves. So getting a sense of movement. This bush here is, is closer, so I don't mind giving that a little bit more information. Well, I 
also wanted to call your attention to a couple of the workshops that I have coming up. Um, in October, I have an online um, workshop just teaching you how to prepare for plein air painting. How to, how to, it's in the studio and um, how to get out there and uh, to just get yourself ready for plein air painting. Um, it'll be four lessons and I'll be teaching, I'm going to do some uh, videos where I'm actually out plein air painting, but uh, the way we do them, our hybrid online lessons are we send the instructional video uh, a week ahead of time. So you have the opportunity to watch it. And I sound like a big frog. You have the opportunity to watch it and um, if you have any questions, you write them down or you can do the lesson and then you bring it to class when we have our meeting, which is about two hours long, where you can paint there or you can um, go through the video at that time and then you have me to ask him questions. And, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. That one is in October. I'm going to put the links down below here uh, so you can check out what I'm talking about with those upcoming classes. Okay. All right, now uh, I'm just gonna kind of put some finishing touches in this lower area here, make it look finished, putting in some moss on these trees and that is the um, cad lemon. Let's get a little bit of that phthalo green in there. And just sort of layer that on in the way that the moss grows in. Just gently, a little bit here and there. plants down here. Little leafy things. Got some growing back in here. Got some on this mossy rock right here. Actually, I want to clean up this moss a little bit more. So take some yellow ochre. Let's grab those yellows. Ultramarine blue. You can test colors, see how that goes. Is it right? Does it need a little more? Oh, it got very quiet. I think there's storm clouds overhead. Grab a little bit of the phthalo green. Some cad yellow medium gives you a nice green.
And we're just going to make a little bit of darker rim where the water meets the mud here. Make some shines. And some leaves stuck in the mud. And then we're pretty much wrapping this up. I would like to thank you for sitting with me today and letting me vent a little bit about what I'm thinking, my life, some of my issues. I know that. Um, it's been difficult for, for very many people. Um, and I hope that, that you will take this lesson and uh, find some peace and quiet. Carve out a little bit of time, even if it's just once a week, where you can get out and put everything in a box, all of your stresses, your worries, and your phone. Just put it all away and come back to it when you get home. And just relax. Don't worry about whether it's going to turn out or not. Who cares? Just enjoy the process. And um, I think you'll find that it's, it's just a nice, rewarding um, time to just clear your head doesn't not for anything else it's just time alone All right, everybody, well, that wraps us up. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that um, you find some peace out there painting. And I do think that um, this is just really one of the most enjoyable things I think I've ever done in my life, just plenary painting. So go ahead and give it a try and remember to keep it simple. 
don't worry about a ton of equipment and don't worry about making a masterpiece. It's not a big deal. Just relax and enjoy it and compartmentalize your thoughts. That's the biggest thing to being out there painting. Try not to think about every other distraction, but just clear your head and relax. All right, everybody, I will see you next time. Don't forget to check out those links below, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you appreciated it. Okay, guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.